The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time Friday before Christmas Monday. Just listening to my dad wrap up his program from last night. Going to be an illiquid day today. Have, have you had that Christmas shopping yet? Pretty interesting how the weekend falls in terms of just even having a conversation with a friend this morning saying, man, everything is going to be bonkers when you've lined it up with procrastinators. OK, Saturday and Sunday, and we're all guilty of it at times. But you have the weekend before Christmas on Monday. I feel like a lot of people are going to be doing that Christmas shopping on Saturday, maybe Sunday morning. Uh, don't save it too late where it infringes upon that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day holiday. That's what I was telling my dad last night as well. But an illiquid day, and we kick things off with some weak inflation data. Interesting how that throws uh, a little bit of gasoline on a potential volatile day with with illiquid in the markets, and we get the S&Ps up by about 10 points right now, trading at 48.07. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 44 points. I mean, check it out, man. Are we going to get the entire move back Wednesday? It's very possible. You got the NASDAQ 100 sitting at 17,000 on the dot. We're only 73 points away from that level. And you take a look, the S&Ps, we've gotten back almost 786 of that entire move. We're now back to just basically where we were Wednesday morning before the market traded down almost 2% intraday. We're going to get it all back by the time we come into Christmas holiday, potentially. Dow, not quite the same acceleration, right? The other indices almost up to the 786. The Dow, that's probably sitting there about the 50%. The Russell, pretty much like the S&P and the NASDAQ, getting back most of those losses. We almost made it down to 2,000, just like that. We're at 2,047 in the Russell. We jump over to Bitcoin, backs off a bit. We're trading off $85 at 43775 Crude trading up 77 pennies at 7466 You jump to that gold contract, check it out. We got the gold contract up $30, 2081 If you haven't checked out the gold report, folks, a great time to do it in general. You got volatility in yields, volatility in the dollar index, that leading to some volatility right now to the upside in that gold contract. Up another, take a look at the daily on gold. You're basically pushing all-time highs right now outside of a couple flash highs. The particular flash high, that's 18 days ago we got that spike high. Man, time just flies. That feels like it was yesterday when gold spiked Sunday night on the futures to 21.52. Nonetheless, we don't get back to 2,000. Today we're up again, and that, of course, is going to be correlated to yields, which we have – a little bit of volatility on the 830 number. We dip for a bit. We're back. We're sitting at 112.28 right now. At a 10-year yield of 3.85%, almost 3.86 to be exact. And you jump over to the dollar index, DXY. What do you got? You got dollar weakness. That should have been a no-brainer. You knew that one was coming if you saw the price of gold, right? Which is why commodities, sometimes currencies are so important right now, especially if you're trading gold. DXY, 101.47. We take a look at the daily I mean, we're going to get it all back, man. Right? As in, we're going to hit 100. Looks like that's where we're heading to. Right back you were, where you were in July on the dollar index, 101.47. And we jump over to the VIX. Trades higher. We got a VIX right now sitting with a 13 handle. All things considered, very little volatility in this market. But as my dad was saying to finish up his program last night, going to be an illiquid market. And we'll see where we go from there. All right. Let's jump into the numbers this morning. And. Chairman Powell is going to have a good Christmas morning, man. He's sipping his coffee. He's going to have uh, maybe two scoops of sugar in his coffee this morning. He's in such a good mood. I mean, you can't deny the numbers, man. Let's just break them down right here. PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, month over month, decreases, right? Core, a much more important number to the Fed, increases at 0.1%. Folks, we've been doing it. 0.1% times 12 is only a 1.2% number. 1.2% number, okay? 2%. 2%. 
PCE index year over year, we're at 2.6. Core, we're at 3.2. Both of those numbers light. And consumer spending comes in line. So what's happening? It's less than we thought. Spending is actually keeping up, even on a monthly basis right now. And what I found myself asking myself, what I found myself asking myself about the market in general this morning is, how long is the Fed going to be comfortable with their rate above 5% if these are the numbers that we're seeing? PCE, 2.6%. You include food and energy, 3.2%. They're at a restrictive rate of 5.25 to 5.5%, folks. I think the market's figured it out. I think they're correct. These numbers are aligning pretty well. And, uh, yeah, the overall price index was down. Down from October. The first decline since basically the onset to 2020. Think about that one. The first decline in the PCE. The PCE is going down. You don't even need the PCE to go down. Remember, we just need the PCE to be going up basically 2% a year. Okay? And 2% a year is what? 0.15% basically, right? If you go up 0.15% on a monthly basis, that gets you a 1.8% annualized rate times 12. Well, we're going down 0.1% right now. So we can almost afford for the PCE to be going up on a month 0.2%. That would put the number at 2.4% going forward. You get the point, man. They're great numbers. We'll see where we go forward. But nonetheless, I think things, think things are setting up for uh, that March meeting. Yeah, my birthday, March 20th. Can't forget that one, man. Now, this is an interesting article in terms of what we're talking about here in terms of economists versus markets, right? Economists don't have the same deal going on right now in terms of what they're thinking, okay? Economists see June as the start, yeah, of the rate cut cycle. The November survey going to June. A month ago, economists expected that to be in July, okay? But the market's thinking March, but in reality, folks, if we're only talking about a three-month period, yes, that matters to the market, okay? But if the only debate right now, which is what struck me when I went through this article earlier, the only de if the only debate right now is whether we're going in March or June and everything else is aligned, I think that sets up well for the market. Yeah. So keep your eye on that one. We could go over it more. But the important one was what we already covered, which is this, because that's going to define the Fed. And we have PCE, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, now going down. We have core PCE now going up at an annualized rate of 1.2%. I don't think many people saw that coming with where the economy is right now X months ago. Pretty remarkable. All right, what else we got as we come into the first break? Yeah, not so much the case for now. This is going to be an interesting one. So you got shoemakers trading lower. You got Nike with their numbers. You trade down 12%, basically. Right? What are you trading? No, down 15 bucks. Yeah, about 12%. 122.53. You're trading at 107.50 right now. You spiked initially. And then, yeah, they got some issues going on, on for Nike. And Nike, the headline over there, slashes the sales outlook. $2 billion in cost cuts. They're trying to save themselves in cost cuts. Well, they might help themselves, but, but you can't cost to the way to growth. And they got some issues here as they cut the sales outlook. Foot Locker's trading lower. We got some action on Friday before Christmas. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks, and hopefully I should have fixed that little uh, ducking that we got going on there. I had a little bit of a connection problem, hopefully. Are we, if my producer could let me know. If we're good to go, I think we are, and hopefully that connects. All right, as we jump through it. So Nike shares, let's jump over to the headline there. To get into the numbers, forgive me as I was jumping around here. Yeah, so they're going to be talking about that highlight a number of risks in our operating environment, including the effects of a stronger U.S. dollar, okay, consumer demand over the holiday season, and our second half wholesale order books. Looking forward, the impact of these risks is becoming clearer, okay? This new outlook reflects, reflects increased macro headwinds, particularly in China and the EMEA. Adjusted digital growth plans are based on recent so they have some issues going on. They're talking about margins to expand between 1.4 to 1.6 percentage points, but they're going to be trying to cut costs. Yeah. And the market's a little worried about that, man. We jump around. So Nike's trading lower at about 12%. You jump over to Foot Locker shares. They're trading lower by $3 on Nike last night. Yeah. All right. You know who else is trading lower? What's their symbol? Tencent. Tencent Holdings. Is that it? No, that's tenable. Maybe that's it. Oh, yeah, that looks to be it. Yeah, down 15% potentially. Well, let's jump over to this deadline. Oh, come on, don't lose me. Uh, I got too many articles pulled up here, but China's cracking down on gaming, folks. That's what's going down. Let's see if I can pull it up over here. All right, we'll jump back to that one. Apologies. Oh, there it is. Perfect. $43 billion in market value after China proposes new, new online rules. Yeah, there it is. So Tencent down about 12.4%. Net eat, net tease. Wow, down 24.6%. Curbing excessive gaming and spending Friday mid-morning ahead of the four-day Christmas weekend holiday in Hong Kong. Pretty interesting how China operates, man. Whew. 
Oof. Yeah, so, so this is China's top gaming regulator require owners of online games to abstain from providing or condoning high value or expensive transactions in virtual entities whether by auction or speculative activity among other things. Daily login rewards are going to be banned. That's like the king of gaming, right? While recharging limits must be imposed with a pop-up issue to users who display irrational consumption behavior. It's too bad we can't get a little bit of this going on in our country, right? You got to have like a dictatorship to get it. Because seriously, some of the stuff that happens here, man, they turn games into basically slot machines um, that you have to pay real money for, right? One of the other things that I don't use TikTok over, and I use everything, folks, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, don't use TikTok, okay? Because I don't trust China. And what I also find so amazing is that China doesn't even allow TikTok in the form that it's used here in America to infiltrate their young people. They have a different version of TikTok in China. And meanwhile, they we allow them to have their version of TikTok in the U.S. And boy, I don't think it's healthy for a lot of the mental health of basically the younger people. We've heard the stories in terms of Instagram, similar stories. Um, stories. But it's always interesting when you see something like this. Um, you know, daily login rewards for games. Now, what would be the counter argument to that? It sounds sad, but the counter argument would be you're crushing jobs, right, through regulations. And this is where the truth lies somewhere in between, folks, okay? Yes, any regulation in theory could crush a job by holding back a business. But if that business is only going to flourish economically by capitalizing on people with addictions to games and maybe they're spending too much money on there and they're getting daily rewards, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff really ties in. But nonetheless, those gaming companies, they depend on it. And they are trading lower this morning. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah, we were talking about this one. This one story out yesterday. Uh, we were talking a little bit about this story yesterday, but I was reading this one last night. Talking about that, that consolidation potentially between Warner and Paramount, their two chiefs talking, debt-laden media giants would face several hurdles, but the industry drive for deals will only pick up. It would make sense, man. You know, you think about the competitors they're going against, they're minnows in the sea, I think, as the article stated yesterday. Yeah, look at those numbers, man. Global streaming subscribers. Not exactly minnows, right? We were talking about pe Peacock yesterday. That was the one that they consider themselves minnows in the sea. You combine those two and you're talking about 155, 160 million. Now, I wonder how many people would subscribe to that subscribe to both of those services. $61 billion of debt. That's the number I wanted to touch on there. That's quite a number, man. $61 billion of debt. You can start a lot of great companies if you get a $61 billion loan to start that company with, folks. Think about that, right? <laughs> Man. So Warner Brothers and Paramount would have accounted to, for 24% of this year's domestic box office, 30% of last year's. The two companies would account for about 35 to 40% of viewing time over so-called linear TV networks. Is that where you want to be? And that's where they might get some pushback here. I don't think you want to be in linear TV networks right now. And they're saying that's going to take place no matter who is in office by the time we have a new president, which is remarkable to think that that's the next 11 months we're going to be living through, folks, is election season. Yeah, pretty remarkable. All right, let's see how some of the FANG stocks are trading as we got less than five minutes to go until the opening bell. Whoops. Jump over to Microsoft shares. You get the S&Ps up by 10 right now. Microsoft, excuse me, Apple shares, barely in the positive. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft flat as well at 373. Take a look at Tesla shares. Tesla's trading higher, up by more than $2 in the pre-market session. We jump over to Google shares, trading up about 40 pennies right now. We jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery. We're just taking a look at yeah, I traded lower this week in your flat this morning. Paramount shares flat as well. Jump over to Disney. 
Just hanging around 9150, man. Netflix shares right now trading at almost 500, trading at 494. We jump over to Meta, quite a year from Meta shares. They're trading basically up $1 right now at 355. We jump over to Nvidia. Let's take a longer term look. This thing just flirting with 500 bucks, man. Yeah, and look at how we made that first move up. I think I set this line sometime in July. Let's see. I think I set that line sometime in July. And look at how we've just, uh, you know, we've gotten about 500. That line's at about, what, 483, something like that. But a lot of optimism priced into this market. Going to need a little bit of a digestion. Where do we don't need digestion right now? <clears throat> how about gold? Pushing all-time highs at 2078. Check out that gold report, folks. And we'll be right back for the open. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, last day before Christmas of trading. And then what do we got? We come back. We got four days for the end of the year. And then we got another holiday as they both fall on Monday for New Year's as well. Christmas on a Monday, New Year's on a Monday. 
Markets closed on Monday, of course, as we will be. I hope you all have a great holiday with your family. And as we kick things off, we get the S&Ps up by 10 points right now. We get the NASDAQ 100 up by 48. A little bit of weakness in the Dow there with the Dow off 60 points. Let's check out some of the action. Nike opens up down $14. That's a 12% drop for Nike shares. Foot Locker on the heels of that. Foot Locker sells a lot of Nike, man, down 8%. Yeah, you're a sneaker company and you're in bed with Nike and Nike's having issues. You're going to have well in Foot Locker. Taking a little bit longer term look at these equities, right? Let's put it on a three-year weekly. It's a tough deal going on with Foot Locker right now, man. You just had quite an acceleration from 50 bucks up to 30. But as you can see, what do we do? We just filled that gap we got from two earnings ago, six months ago in May when they come out with their numbers. You jump a price point. Not a lot of strength in that chart right now. Nike, you jump over. Yeah, this is a tough one, man. And this is where things get interesting. We say, does this market have room to go higher? I was looking at some of the equities yesterday, right, where I said, you know, we're potentially an A, B, C, A to B, C to Ds that can take this market higher because we haven't even come back to test the recent highs we've had. Likes, the stocks, the like of Amazon, up another two-tenths percent today. Still got 30 bucks to the upside. You're completing an A to B, C to D. I think Microsoft we were taking a look at. Yeah, that's well above the highs, but that could be pushing it. A to B, C to D. I think Google was one of the other equities we took a look at. We're only trading at 143. You got highs out there above 150 as you're trading higher in pretty dramatic fashion. Meta shares. <laughs> Quite a year for Meta, man. 356. You're only 30 bucks off the all-time highs at 384. Meta shares up another half a percent today as we get a little bit of a lift in the market. We check in on yields. Tenure right now. Just chopping around, 112.27. Let's take a look at the dollar because that was where we really got some action here. We got dollar weakness. And it's continuing, 101.50 right now in the dollar. That's been putting a bid in the commodities. You got gold up $26 right now. Crude up 72 pennies, trading at 74.61. And we've talked about the inflation data. It's Friday before Christmas. It's going to be a little bit of liquid out there. Santa Claus is coming on Monday evening. Uh, and how about this article, man? Pretty cool. I'll put this one in the Tiger's Den from the journal. I think it was out this morning, right? Last night. Okay, last night at about midnight. So I was reading it this morning. It's just interesting. Okay, we'll jump around a bit from the market to a little geopolitical, um, whatever you call, a man like Putin getting challenged for control for a country like Russia and the man who did it thinking that he would have the right to fly safely around that country after that. Think about that, man. Think about that and the ego that it takes to do that, right? I mean, he flew out of Moscow, man, and he was on the flight plan. I just don't know how that level of whatever you call it, um, I don't think any word would do it justice. But they talk about here. So Pergozin, he was on his Embraer Legacy 600, sitting on the tarmac in August in Moscow, heading home to St. Petersburg with nine others on board, some of his top commanders, top generals. Through the delay, okay, no one inside the cabin noticed that a small explosive device was slipped under the wing. It's just that simple, man. Uh, things got put in play a couple months prior. Putin was aware. And this story, I mean, they call it an exclusive out here, okay? And um, Petrushev. A top ally of the Russian leader for decades put in motion the assassination of the mutinous chief of the Wagner mercenary group. And it was just that simple, man. They had him on the runway. They had a little safety check. And they waited on the runway for that safety check to be completed. A bomb got placed on the wing. They let it climb for 30 minutes to 28,000 feet. Think about that one, right? They make sure you're at 28,000 feet before they blow that wing off you. And, uh, yeah, blew it apart. And it spiraled all 10 on the flight were killed they denied involvement and then there's a few quotes in here you know this one says hours after the incident none of this should be surprising but see it play out in real time as opposed to just some kind of thriller that's airing on hbo max uh, a european involved in the intelligence gathering who maintained a back channel of communication with the kremlin and saw news of the crash asked an associate there what happened and he had to be removed was the quote and i would say so man you know putin I don't know. Pretty interesting to see how Prigozhin thought that he would have the ability to act as if um, he could do that and then have impunity over in Russia. Nonetheless. 
All right, what else we got going on? So we talked about some of the China companies. We talked about Tencent. Let's take a look at NetEase. There's a drop for you. You go to bed at 105, you wake up at 83. Anytime you're trading in these Chinese stocks, man, be aware that you might wake up one morning. Look at this, man. You know, you bought this thing to start the year. You were up 50 bucks on 70. Man, what's that? 70% gain, basically. You might not even have any gain by the year end. Think about that. You were up 70% on this equity in November for the year let alone if you were cherry-picking the lows. But that's just kind of where we kicked off the year, about 70 75 bucks. You're up 60 to 70%. You're going to give it all back. Because these might not stop, man. You know, you're a gaming company in China, and they're talking about r ramping things up in terms of regulations. And what's so remarkable is, think about it, they're protecting their consumers, their individuals, okay? That's the one that spins my head. Yes, you shouldn't be able to do that with without some democracy involved, but it's too bad that we can't have a little bit of democracy and combine that with a little bit of benefit for the consumers because, boy, social media, gaming, all that stuff, it's becoming very addicting and harmful to society. And listen, I might get a PlayStation soon, okay? Gaming is great. You got to separate the two in terms of moderation in anything, okay? And the nature of that gaming and especially kids, right? Preying on kids. And it's not that, oh, you can play a game here and there. It's that addiction cycle that they're so good at. I watch, I'll tell you, we have a, Tommy, of course, is two. He'll be three in February. His brother Landon is six. He'll be seven in June. And I've seen Landon play some of these games that award you bucks, right? They award you bucks and then you can buy things or something like that or you get a, a greater level. And I've watched how he has the tendency to want the rewards, want the money, and meanwhile, the rewards are basically even meaningless within the game that he's playing, but somehow they've trained his brain to think he needs them. It's almost like that same slot, addi slot machine addiction that we see in real life action somehow. Um, so yeah, but the gaming companies will make less money, and that's why we haven't done it here. Because the pushback is always that they'll make less money, we'll have less growth, we'll have less jobs created. Always remember, folks, we can have both. Okay, the truth can be somewhere in between, which is an important thing to remember. Yeah, Let's see how Apple's trading on the open right now. We got Apple, basically flat. Put things back to a minute. Yeah, we trade lower on the open on Apple. Interesting, man. Apple just gave back a dollar on the open as this market's actually pushed a little bit higher. We're going to get a little bit of a rotation. Microsoft trades lower as well. Ooh, trades lower off the open as well. We still got markets in positive territory, folks. Stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about day before Christmas. TFNN right has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's all Always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S and P's up almost 20 right now. Markets catching a lift. The Dow up by 65. Dow had been in the red. I got kind of the heat map up here on the Thinkorswim platform, and as you can see, Nike, a big loser in the Dow, off 10% right now. You're trading at 109, but even with that going on, you got companies like Walmart up six tenths percent, Cisco up seven tenths percent, Intel positive by half a percent, Mike, um, IBM, excuse me, positive by half a percent, American Express positive by six tenths. You got a lot of green on this board, man. Amgen, a very high price stock, up a full percent right there for Amgen shares. You jump over to the S and P 500 for a glimpse. Nike sticks out in the red. You got Ansys, Inc. up sixteen percent. Now, how about the Russell, though? Check out this heat map on the Russell. There's a lot of green, man. Right? Check out some of these companies, man. You got Biopharma rocking. You got some pharma deals. Look at these biotech sections. Look at them all glowing green in here. Now, you got the Russell right now up a solid, what is that, 1.3% almost for the Russell. And you can see why. Consumer discretionary is where you're getting hit there. Always interesting when you do it, right? Healthcare, dramatically green. Financial is doing pretty well. Information technology, not that bad. Consumer discretionary, weighing on the Russell in a big way right now. That's the only basic. And then you jump over to the S&P. Yeah, consumer discretionary with Nike leading the way. All right, we take a look at this chart. We back it up to a 15-minute, and we only got about 14 points in the S&P to get it all back, 48.30. Do we hit it today? Why not, right? Why not? Let's see what else we got going on. We jump over to Coinbase. With Bitcoin roaring higher, markets roaring higher, Coinbase up another 3.5% today. Yeah, pretty remarkable. Now, they also got uh, an optimistic call from an investment bank doubling their target, calling the company the Amazon of the cryptocurrency space. Well, Bitcoin may be back, man. It's possible. Bitcoin trading at 43,000. It's been quite a year for Bitcoin. Rising from about 16 to 43. We got highs out there near 70. It's only one Bitcoin, man. Yeah, so in the in the healthcare spectrum, you have Bristol Myers Squibb buying Karuna Therapeutics. That's KRTX is their symbol. They're up 47%, and they're going to buy them for $14 billion or $330 per a share. So that number, almost right at that number. We were trading. They're buying them at 330 share. We were just trading at 160 less than two months ago. So if you're in that equity, congrats. That is quite an acceleration, to say the least.
All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yelp. Let's talk a little bit of Yelp. This one's interesting. Quite the year for Yelp. 25 bucks up to almost 50. Yelp up another 1.55% today. And this story, how about 1.2 billion a year in revenue? A tenfold increase from when the company went public in 2012 and about what Google generates in ad revenue every two days. <laughs> Pretty remarkable when you put it in that context. Um, but look at the share performance, man, this year. Well above NASDAQ, well above Google even. Cherry picking some of the best out there. Sales and marketing cost as a percentage of an annual revenue. Not bad. Pretty much a declining number when you look at the cost as a percentage of the annual revenue. But that's their sales and marketing cost. And usually they go hand in hand. That's not exactly a fixed cost like you're dealing with. Yeah. And what is interesting is I remember a couple years back, a few years back at this point, probably five or ten even, um, Yelp was on 60 Minutes, the CEO, talking about how Google has clamped down so much on driving everybody to their own, basically, search functions of everything that a company like theirs could not actually be started in today's environment because Google would stifle that type of search result to that degree. That's where things really were ramping up against Google. And what's happened? Well... Yelp's doing just fine, man. Okay, so all these arguments of over-competitive behavior from Google, I mean, you just saw it, folks. They have increased that number an average of 12. Okay, that's the cost. Excuse me. A tenfold increase in sales from when they went public in 2012. So I think they're doing just fine. I think that was the guy that was on there on 60 Minutes. And it's an interesting piece, folks. You want to find that one? Do some Googling over the weekend and find that one because it is. All right, let's talk a little bit of football, man. We got some great matchups coming up, and uh, yeah, they're talking about the year, and I don't, I don't think they're going to steal Christmas, man. But they got some games going on. For the first time, the league scheduled three games when the holiday falls on a Monday, including one showdown featuring the top two teams. So Christmas Eve, get ready for it, man. Yeah, you got uh, the Ravens and the 49ers is the marquee game. The two best teams, the favorites to win the most valuable player and carries an enormous playoff implications. But they say more about the NFL's ambitions. Yeah, it's on Christmas. Oh, this is Christmas. Wait a second. What day is Christmas? What am I reading here? Christmas is on a Monday. Okay, so they're just talking about when it's been on Christmas. And they've never put three games on there. I don't know. I guess so. Maybe they stacked them all. I mean, what happens is you don't have a lot of college football games going on, so they have the ability to stack games. We had some going on on Thursday already. You're going to have games on Saturday, of course, as it goes forward. But, yeah, they're trying to corner a little bit of Christmas. Is What is interesting is I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I always remember seeing those basketball games playing, right? Usually LeBron, the Lakers would be on. Kobe, I remember some Christmases, sadly enough, um, watching Kobe play. So there's something about sports being on the TV in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. So they talk about, even on Sundays, the league used to rewrite its schedule as if playing football on the day would be an affront to Santa Claus himself, okay? In 1971... Two playoff games featured dozens of future Hall of Famers. That day began when the Dallas Cowboys met the Vikings and seemed like it might never reach an end. When the next one went into the longest game ever. And what happened? There was a little bit of pushback. So the backlash was strong enough that the league didn't play another Christmas game until 1989. Now it feels like they eat it up, but it's a different world, man. In terms of advertising and what goes on there. <clears throat> Yeah, they talk a little bit of trades. We talked about the Fed. So if you didn't catch the beginning of the program, circling back on these numbers, man, strong numbers. I Nothing slows this market down right now, in my opinion, man. We're sitting at 48.20 in the S&Ps. We're 10 points off the all-time highs. NASDAQ 100 up 74. The Dow is up 105, and that's with Nike putting quite a pullback into that index. Dow weakest index only up by three-tenths percent <clears throat> Excuse me, because of Nike, but nonetheless still up 100 points. For Nike shares, consumer prices are going down, folks, and even on a core basis. Do this one. 
you got somebody going crazy about inflation, make sure you remind them that month over month prices are going down. And on a core basis, they're only going up 1.2%. That'll be a conversation starter at the Christmas table. I kid. Keep the peace. Have a nice Christmas. Avoid the politics in the market. We got one more segment. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow right now. You are up 112 points, even with Nike there. We're pushing 37,865, the Dow. Weakest index, but up by three-tenths percent, even with Nike weighing it down. NASDAQ 100, up by half a percent, 80 points to the upside, back above 17,000. S&Ps, up by half a percent, 48.21, within about nine points of the all-time high. And how about the Russell, man, making recent highs of 2067. Now, remember, the Russell is the one that hasn't hit that high, and you still got 400 points to go. But oh boy, we took a look at that heat map, right? And the Russell. Just, everything is bonkers, no matter where you look, man. I mean, look at this. Real estate. You got equities in there. Compass, up 10%. Redfin, up 6.5%. You jump to enemy, en excuse me, energy. You got a bunch of green in there. Healthcare. Of deals going on. Karuna, getting bought for $14 billion, up 47%. Just remarkable, the acceleration you got going. All right. On the flip side of that, we talk a little bit of credit card debt, man. 2024 going to be an interesting one, man. The Fed is going to be cutting. 
Can the consumer maintain it? Is there going to be any lag? And quite the headline here, revenge spending drives U.S. credit card debt past a trillion dollars, one trillion dollars. That number going up by 48 billion in the third quarter alone. The number is now 1.08 trillion, according to the New York Fed. And that was before the holiday shopping season started. What does that mean? Yeah, that means that it is going to go up, folks. Uh, the health of the U.S. consumer is going to be closely watched as the U.S. Fed eyes rate cuts. And I would say so, man. Yeah, you got a lot of Americans draining their pandemic savings. Now you're going into credit cards, and we'll see if it pops up and if it matters. But nonetheless, that number going up at $1.08 trillion. $1.08 trillion. Be careful of those credit cards, folks. All right. Thanks so much for starting your Friday off right here at TFNM with me. Folks, have a great day. Have a safe day. Uh, enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends over the Christmas holiday. Happy Hanukkah, whatever you're celebrating. Enjoy it, folks. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your family. Stay safe out there, okay? No drinking in front of it. We all might enjoy a couple holiday cocktails occasionally. Getting it over, it's worth it. We hope to see you back here on Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. Have a great Christmas. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman, we got live programming all day. Stay tuned and have a great Friday, folks. We'll see you Tuesday. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho,